what is resistance priming and, and how is it best conducted on, particularly for game day performance? Um, great question. There's a lot in that. Um, uh, resistance priming is essentially the use of, of resistance training, some form of resistance training with the, um, the goal of enhancing performance. Now, um, resistance priming, uh, typically, it, it we see in practice, it's, there's not a lot of research on it yet, um, but typically we see in practice is, is this um, uh, appears as people doing um, small, um, typically their power focus sessions, either the day of the game. So if it's a night game, it might be in the morning um, or the day before a game potentially. So um, and the research has looked at everything from about six hours to 32 hours. How do you measure the effect that the priming's had on game day? You know, because obviously there's a lot of that goes into winning a game of uh, team sport, uh, opposed to, I guess, a 100 meter sprint. But for team sport athletes, like, hey, how do you sort of work out how effective a six hour primer was to a 32? And, and... Yeah. Um, awesome question. I don't have an answer for you, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. um, from a research perspective, uh, really the research has only really looked at jump performance. So yep. typically a resistance training session and what's the, what's the effect on jump performance. Um, uh, there's been a little bit around repeat sprint, sprint running, but um, that's, I, I guess, you know, the next frontier for us as researchers is, is to try to um, make the applications uh, um, a little bit more applicable to sport. For those thinking about bringing priming in, how would a, when you're putting your plan together for a group, is, what are some of the key considerations in terms of like, uh, is it age of the athlete? Is it the sport they're about to play compared to rugby, compared to a tennis player? Uh, you mentioned time, night game, uh, the duration of the game. But what are some sort of, I guess, some key considerations do you think that um, yeah, coaches awesome. need to take into account? Awesome question. Lots of lots of things to go into there. Um, the first thing um, that we seem to be seeing in the research is that priming has its biggest benefit on well-trained athletes. So if you're working with developmental athletes and you're like, oh, I'm going to do this next best thing, it's priming, you're probably you're not necessarily wasting your time, but your time would be better spent with just developing that athlete, the underlying characteristics of that athlete. So um, it's probably uh, most beneficial for, for, for well-trained strength athletes. What are some, like you mentioned, how developing athletes, it might not be that effective compared to trained athletes. What are some other common mistakes that you've uh, witnessed, heard about, or, or yeah, um, that you think SNCs can potentially make in this space when we're bringing in primer sessions on game day or the day before? Yeah, good, um, really good question. Um, Pete Harrison did a survey, which has also been published um, on, I guess, the different types of um, sessions that that um, people have been using. And then Pat's taken that work, and he's um, just in the process of writing up a study now where he interviewed about 35-ish um, S&C coaches from the professional sport and the um, uh, academy and institute network in Australia. Um, and what we find there is there's a, a massive mixture and probably the majority of them aren't doing any of the thing that's evidence-based. So they're doing this, you know, wide range of things um, you know, based on perhaps a little bit of guesswork or on athlete feel. So some of the mistakes that we're seeing is, um, you know, perhaps going too heavy if they're doing a, a day before session. What about range of motion and then tempo? Like, is it isotonic movements? Is it isometrics? Like talk us through, uh, is that individualized to the athlete on personal preference? Yeah. Those sort of, I guess, nuances. Yeah. You've, you've asked lots of different questions there. <laughs> yeah. Um, um <laughs> yes. So um, because they're experienced athletes, then you, you'd be picking movements that those athletes are um, uh, well equipped to do. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a study that's in second review that we've looked at isometric and low load and we found very little benefit. So, okay. yeah. Um, uh, you know, watch this space. Hopefully it gets accepted soon, but we, we don't seem to think there's anything in the isometric space. So, yeah, mm -hmm. typically it it is um, an isotonic um, type movement. So, like, like I said, the majority have picked 
squats or a jump squat, um, um, but typically squat. And, and again, that's because they've gone the, the simple route of um, um, what can we see benefit in.